I love that you asked that. But something yeah. that was very interesting is I loved how Coach Manasco said that Miami is still going to, you know, recruit the hell out of Jason Marshall and Corey Collier. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I didn't want to – when talking to Coach, I didn't, I didn't want to say, you know, that – Florida was terrible or whatever. I think Florida, the Florida fan base is actually a lot worse than we are in regards to that issue. Um, it's also you know, bigger. <laughs> what was that? It's also like they also have a larger fan base too. Yes. So there's yes. there's more idiots. Yeah, yeah. I I and I think that they do. I mean, they're horrible, man. You know, I I hate the whole. Oh, Leonard Taylor wasn't even a take. You know, <laughs> like, like he wasn't the best D tackle available. Like just stupid stuff like that. Like. It, it's whatever, you know, um, yeah. I, I just didn't want to, you know, put coach in a position where he, uh, like had to agree with me that the Florida fan base sucks, <laughs> but you know, cause, cause we do have that in ours too, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, I just want everyone to stop. Yeah. Like, let's just like, let's just be happy for them. I know like yeah. I had a, like, cause I, I tweeted, you know, when Jason Marshall came in, I said, Hey, Best of luck, brother. I know you're going to kill. And I had Miami fans, like, getting mad at me. I'm like, yeah. like, what? Like, these kids, yeah. like, they've always been, like, they've always been, um, you know, great to, like, nice to UM. They've been, you know, yeah. when I write articles about them, they always retweeted. They've, they've always been really nice to me. And so, like, why wouldn't, just because they're wearing another jersey, like, I know it's the Gators, but, like, I, I want to see South Florida kids succeed. Yeah. You know, I want, you know, I want, I just want them to do well. And so, I, yeah. I. I hate the the mindset and the negativity that that comes from some of these guys, and it's not just Miami fans. I think every fan yep. base of college sports has this kind of uh, has some neg- negative people. Yep, agreed. And you know, I so I'm a proponent of. I think there needs to be space for people to be upset about recruiting decisions. I just don't think we should point it towards the players, you know, because like I said, they're young kids, you know. Like I get it. I'm very invested in recruiting i spend a lot of my time looking into this stuff um you know and so admittedly when jason marshall committed to uf like that affected my day (laughs) you know like it it made me sad it was like it was like a gut punch is like oh crap i thought you know i thought we had jason in the bag um you know but at the end of the day i'm not gonna get mad towards jason marshall because he's just doing his best yeah you know it's like let's point it in a different direction. You know, exactly. I I would rather people point it at Miami at Miami coaches because at least they're being paid and compensated and and they're highly regarded for the job that they're doing. Um but you know like just send it somewhere else into the universe, you know? Like you can be mad but don't don't like get confrontational on Twitter with a 17-year-old. Like it is just it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, and one and one more. Uh, I wanted to note another thing that Coach Manasco said when he said Miami isn't going anywhere. That like gave me chills. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. that was awesome to to hear that from a, a guy who coaches some of the best players in the country in yeah. South Florida. And even though Miami's been down the last fifteen years, it it just goes to show you that Miami, even after a six and seven year, that logo will always hold weight. It will yeah. always mean something when you see the U. I mean, yep. I, and that that was awesome to 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 hear, man. For sure. Yeah. For okay, sure. So, I need that. Yeah. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, I was just gonna agree with you. So. Okay. So before we go, um, we got a question, um, uh, from Casey Nevije. Um, okay. friend, he's he's always been really nice to us on the, uh, yep. you know, on Love social media. Yeah. And so he posted a question the other day that, um, I'd love to answer if you got the time. Absolutely. Let's hear it. Yeah. So he asked us, he said, um, going into the 2020 season, assuming we still have one, which we will, 27 days, um, he asked, what position group will be most improved? Which one prog- regresses the most? For me, most improved will be a tie between O-line and our kickers, and most regressed will be linebackers. Okay. Um, yeah, I think most improved will be – our offensive line. Um, And I, you know, I agree with you there. I think there's a lot of angles to approach that from. I think we have better coaching now. I think we have better talent. And, you know, so that is getting a guy like Jared Williams, also giving guys like Zion and John Campbell more time to develop. Um, You know, Corey Gaynor getting a year older, 
um, Ja'Kai Clark and, and uh, Scaife, you know, them getting a, a year older and, and, you know, more time in the weight room and stuff like that. And then Rhett Lashley's scheme will also help. So I think there's a multitude of reasons why O-line will be the most improved. Um, I like your pick of linebackers for the biggest regression. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, me, that was KC. Just, just Oh, oh, sorry. Well, yeah. Then so KC, I was, yeah, I was reading just the rest of his tweet. <laughs> yeah, I got you. So KC, I agree. Well, I'm not sure if linebacker is my choice, but you make a great – that is a great choice. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see if the the speed at linebacker that everyone's talking about really makes the difference. Um, you know, I've long been a skeptic of people thinking that Zach McLeod will immediately step in and be better than Quarterman and Pinkney were. Because, um, I mean, he was the, the odd man out for a reason. Um but I also kind of want to say wide receivers, man. I'm, I yes. mean, like we lost KJ Osborne and, and Jeff Thomas, but mostly KJ Osborne. <laughs> and, and we really didn't replace that level of talent. Like KJ was great. Yeah. KJ was awesome. And, and um, just the thing that was most awesome was just his leadership skills. And that's the kind of guy that you wish that you could have at the university of Miami for all four of his years. Um, for me, the position that will improve the most, I, you know, I, why, quarterback, let's say quarterback. Uh, that's a great um, one. I didn't even think about that, but that's no, well, no, I mean, it's because like, honestly, for the first up until the Virginia tech game, the court, I mean, even even in the Virginia Tech game, Cozy threw for like 450 yards. But like up until then, our court, like Jaron was playing well. But like after that, you know, it was up and down for all the guys. And so I, I think the consistency of a guy like Derek King is going to be I think people are underestimating it um, and not realizing how big of a deal that is going to be. And it's the position that has plagued Miami for the past 15 years, um, with the exception of. Brad Kaya and Stephen Morris for a few games. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that receivers is another. Ja'Cory Harris for an off season as well. Ja'Cory he did Harris, really, yeah, really two great. Games in 2009, Ja'Cory Harris. Yeah. <laughs> Miami they, legend, Miami legend. But, um, uh, but yeah, I think you make a really good point for receivers too. Uh, especially with the, the arrival of coach Rob Likens. I think it's going to make, and Rhett Lashley's playbook. I think it's, you know, it's just a, a, it's a factor of simplicity that we didn't have in our offense last year that just makes it easier for um, wide receivers. I mean, Coach Manasco said it the best is that just, you know, make it easy for the receivers and let them go and do their thing. And that's what we've been asking for and begging for from an offensive coordinator since, you know, the, yeah. the glory days. Um, and then obviously the offensive line. I It's – I, I a lot of when I say that we return all of our offensive linemen from last year, a lot of people be like, oh, well, they, you know, they sucked ass or, you know, they were horrible. And I'm like, you have to. OK, people have to understand the position that Zion Nelson was put in as a true yeah. freshman and the fact that they rushed his process. You know, he gained about 50 pounds in the offseason. And now after, you know, an offseason of, of building his body to an athletic um you know, stature as an offensive lineman, that's going to help a lot. And obviously Jared Williams, coach Justice's, you know, leadership and and coaching. And we say it all the time, but just the scheme of Rhett Lashley's offense is going to make it so that, you know, the quarterback is getting rid of the ball quicker. You know, we're not going to be drawing out these 15 second long play action fakes where we, and can we be honest? Like we blame so much on the offensive line, but when Jaron was doing a a long play action and everything like that, that sometimes that's not the offensive line's fault. That's the play calling's fault. So yep. I think I think we need to to recognize that. And then for the position that regresses, I don't. I, this is going to make me sound like a you know a fanboy, but honestly, I don't see many position groups for us regressing. Um, to the point where it's like, wow, they took a significant drop down. I think linebacker will be interesting to see um, because 
you know, we, we still don't know who's going to start next to Zach McLeod. And, you know, the other guys besides Zach are young guys or they're either young guys or guys who have been injured for most of their career. But I think we're going to see a type of speed, athleticism and quickness at the Miami linebackers that we didn't have last year. So I think um, early on the linebackers may struggle. You know, that Louisville game is going to be very, very telling, um, you know, about our linebackers. But I, I don't think that they're going to struggle. And I think a lot of that has to do with the pass rush that we have. I think that's going to help yeah. them out a lot. Because when you have, you know, a Jalen Phillips, Anesta Silvera, you know, Quincy Roche, big John Ford, linebackers can just roam free and, and get to the ball and attack the ball carry. And so, um, you know, we didn't have the quickness and the speed from our linebackers last year um, that we were able to do that. So regress maybe a little bit, but it's by the end of the year, I think Canes fans are going to be very pleased with the way our linebacker room is looking for the future. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I'm very – there's some trepidation, you know, for me, for our linebackers group. Uh, I mean, you brought up a lot of the reasons why. There's just a lot of – we're betting on a lot of unknowns. And, you know, our our biggest tent pole for the, the linebacker position is Zach McLeod, who was not as good as – I mean, he might fit the scheme better, but – I mean, like I said, there was a reason he was the odd man out with Shaq. And maybe, maybe it was because of the scheme. It could be. It could be. I'm not discounting that. But I'm saying, like, that's kind of been his whole career here was, like, he was he was the third guy out of that group. Um, and, I, and I don't want to sound like I'm hating on him because, you know, I, I don't know. I, I hope it makes sense what I'm saying. I'm not trying to hate on McLeod. I'm just trying to slow people down. Like let's let's oh, let's pump the brakes a little bit on this linebacking group, because uh, it's all unknowns, and the only known that we have is Zach, who I don't know. I I just yeah. I I would feel more comfortable if it was like Shaq who stayed <laughs> the next year. Well, than honestly, dude, I I I love Shaq Cordman, and I'm and I and I loved what he was able to do at Miami, but. I, at the end of last year, I think it um, I think it was pretty clear that for this Miami defense, especially now that we had a striker, and especially with the way that modern offenses are going, yeah, um, He's slow. It, it, he, he was slow, and um, yeah, you know he, he doesn't have the quickness that some of these guys have. I'm not saying that Zach. I mean, well, remember when we did our our first interview with our boy Ryan Roberts, who mm-hmm. I think we, should, we need to have him on again and talk oh, to yeah, him for great. so. Um, yeah, but, seen, hold on, let me let me interrupt real quick with okay. Ryan. Have you seen his tweets recently about Brevin Jordan? Yes, they'll break your heart. I was so sad when I saw him. He, he has Brevin is is tight end four right now. Well, I think and but I, I and uh, that, it's not a I, horrible take. It's just no, sad. It's not because for Miami fans. Looking at Brevin, we know, you know, what he can do. We love Brevin. I love Brevin. He's actually one of the guys that, um, because I have, uh, I have to do the media stuff in about an hour, and we're going to be talking to Brevin, Coach Field, and Will Mallory, and so I'm, I'm excited for that. But cool. outside of Miami, you look at Brevin as a guy who has a, a good game every now and again, but he hasn't been consistent, and and he's been injured. Like he, he, like he's been, I didn't, he didn't play after the Florida state game last year. And so, and even before that, our former offensive coordinator would only get him the ball about two to three or maybe one, once a game. And, and we were giving him jet sweeps on the 10 yard line on third yeah. and goal. And he's just had very mediocre at best quarterback play besides one game. We had, we got one great game from Jaron Williams and the rest of his career has been mediocre quarterback play. If we're being honest. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so um, I, who's to say Brevin won't come back next year, too? He could. Like, he very well could because I, I think when he is healthy and when he is you know, getting the ball, he is the best tight end in America. You saw what yeah. he was able to do against the Gators defense last year. Um, yeah. you, know, you saw what he did against Virginia Tech's defense last year, uh, you know, a Bud Foster defense. And so – when he is healthy and on the field and a target on offense, he is he's as good as anybody and if not better than any other tight end in America. So yeah. that sucks that Ryan says that we'll have to call him out when he comes on. We should have <laughs> him next week. 
Yeah, dude, let's reach out to him. I'd, I'd love to have him on. I'm, I'm a big fan of Ryan's. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But yeah, I mean... Tell him he broke my heart. Yeah, yeah, hey, but let's just... I mean, 